Hmm? Yeah? Are we going to me or to Katie? Afternoon and welcome to our Ribble Live event. So we know that London Bike Show had been cancelled, so we've decided to bring you a live event from headquarters. Um, we're going to be bringing you the full Ribble range directly to you at home. And we're going to be taking you through all the different bikes. So whether you have a passion for road or bike packing or want to try out an e-bike, we can answer all of your questions. Um, there, were, there was meant to be two of us on the screen, but obviously with social distancing, I'm on the other side of the room. I'm going to be looking at your questions as they're coming in. So anything you want to know or ask, um, then just let us know, drop us a comment. So just a little bit about Ribble um, for those that don't know. We are a little bit different to your usual bike shop. Um, all the bikes that you're going to see here today um, on our website are fully customizable. So that's going to be in spec and color all through our bike builder platform online. So once you've spec the bike how you like it or chosen one of our recommended builds, we can assemble your bike right here in Preston and have it delivered to you within seven to 10 days. Uh, by selling directly to you, we're able to offer unique customization, service and value for money. So um, I'm going to pass you over to Yaku in a second, who is going to be showing you through all the different bikes um, that we have in the range. So yeah, if you've got, like I said, if you've got any questions, let us know in the comments and yeah, we'll put them to Yaku, Yaku shortly. Hello everyone, thank you Katie and welcome to Rubble HQ. This is a first for us, this is a first for many. Uh, before we get started, I would like to take a moment and say thank you to our NHS staff who is absolutely doing a phenomenal job at the moment. We thank you very much guys, uh, just taking a moment to acknowledge that. So yes, let's dive into our range, obviously trying to keep it as much as a show profile for you to showcase for us to showcase to you as we would have done at the London Bike Show. As Katie explained, we are going to be going through our range. You're welcome to throw your questions towards us and I'll be happy to answer them um, as far as possible for you. So let's get started. We are going to take a look first at our Endurance SLR and our SL range displayed over here today. Um, our super light bulb that we have built here is 5.4 kilograms on the SLR frame set. And then obviously our bike of the year award, the Endurance SL disc year displayed with that SRAM Axis Red 12 speed group set and the cosmic wheels. Um, pointing out some key features between the two bikes. Obviously, as you can see, aesthetically and frame design, they are very much similar. The differences does come in though in the construction of the two frame sets. The Endurance SLR is constructed of Tory T1000 carbon fiber, whereas the Endurance SL has that combination, that multi-layered carbon fiber construction between Tory T1000 and the T800. It also has a aluminum sleeve to which a BSA threaded bottom bracket will screw into, uh, obviously giving it a bit more ease of maintenance and stiffness on the BB area there. Both the bikes you can see have the dropped seat stays on the seat tube, uh, optimizing that vertical compliance of the frames. We have recently um, had these bikes in wind tunnel testing with our pro team racing on the SLR frame set. Uh, and the wind tunnel test has been significant. They have shown us that the truncated um, aerodynamic tubing profiles of the frame set offered a 28% less drag uh, versus your traditional round tubing frames. Along with the integrated level five carbon handlebar and cockpit, um, these have proved to have a 40% less drag towards uh, over your round handlebar and stem combination. Both these models are available in both disc brake and in caliper disc brake models, caliper brake models, sorry, um, rim brake models as displayed here, obviously. Through the bike building process, you are also able to customize them across our entire range. We are going to cover it quite a lot today. Um, you are able to customize it your way through that custom color. Um, that you can have. You can have your bike your way. This model here obviously displayed in that beautiful blue um, with the gold finish to it as well. This is the production red color. So 
So yes, you will be able to see that through the bike building process. A pro team that is racing on these bikes obviously have to be UCI legal. So they are on the UCI circuit uh, where they are being raced and being used as well. Yes, so very exciting bikes. Katie, you've got a question for us. Just a quick question, yeah. Are there any rider weight limits on the SL? So the rider weight limits will predominantly come down to wheel manufacturers and wheel standards, but the SLR does carry a rider weight limit of 100 kilograms because of the lightweight construction, that monocoque carbon construction of the bike. And so what is the difference between like the SL and SLR um, with some of the other road bikes in the range? So predominantly the biggest difference like we've covered will be the construction of it, the two carbon fibers used in them. Geometry and design, they are identically the same. These bikes, like we've mentioned, will be used for your racer, your um, person who wants to go and smash age category records and who wants to race the bike, not just for your weekend rides and for um, um, the riding with your social club, which is perfectly fine. This is more for your flexible um, road racer who wants to get on the bike and who wants to drop some white bombs, who wants to ride it hard, who wants to ride it fast as well. Hence why, like we said, the frame is being used by our pro team as well. And what difference do they have with all the other road bikes that um, Rebel has? So that's a very good question. As you can see here behind me, we've got the R872, which is our other award-winning bike. This is our new model here. The predecessor to it had got very good reviews as well. A lot of you have the R872 and you know it is a great, great bike. So our new design here, between the two differences, Katie, just following up on the question that we had, as you can see, geometry, they differ very, very much. Uh, the Endurance SL has got a very low head tube, a low ride height to the floor, putting the rider in a much more racier position, obviously adding to the aerodynamics of the bike and of the overall ride experience. Whereas on the RHC, or RH2 visually, you can see it's got a longer head tube, shorter on the top tube, putting your cockpit in a much more sportive setup. So that is exactly the market that the RH72 is aimed for. For the person who's making that migration from an alloy uh, frame to a carbon frame, this is a great starter carbon bike. It's a comfortable bike to ride. The position is nice. It's, you can take it out on your club runs, on your sportive rides, or even just on training rides. Fully mudguard compatible, this is a great carbon bike for the winter times as well. Something that you can use uh, over the winter training months and then also they're available in both the caliper rim brake and the disc brake, which is a great advantage for those winter rides. Um, coming in different colors as well, fully customizable through the bike builder. Uh, these bikes will also take your cycling just that little bit further, that little bit farther. If you are not the racer that you um, maybe once was, <laughs> or if you're striving to be the racer, you can migrate from the R872 to the Endurance, have a summer bike and a winter bike. Re Rebel Collections on our hashtag MyRebel page, we can see we have customers who have vast amounts of Rebels in their collection. So either one of these will be a great addition to your collection as well. Do we have more questions on the two rides? that we are the two bucks that we have available yeah so one quick question is yeah. all andrew is asking um are the sl safe to use on a turbo trainer the sl mo most definitely the disc and the caliper can be used on turbo trainers whether you have a direct mount wheel trainer where your through axle will go through the trainer the, the axle that is uh, supplied with the bike goes through the trainer or if you have a wheel in trainer as well, your uh, tax flow jumps to mind, the tax flow smart. There's a couple of wheel in smart trainers as well. If you have one of those, the through axle is a industry standard 142 by 12. You will have to get the compatible axle from tax. They do supply these separately on their website where you can go and have a look at them. Alternatively, the same on the caliper version, the, the rim brake version. Uh, you will have to get the compatible axle with those oversized nuts so that the clamping system of the trainer can clamp onto them. But yes, they are compatible. One more question is, Lorena has asked, do all the road bikes come with integrated stems? They do not, they do not. So from the base models on the product pages online, you will see that the Endurance SL disc 
starts at 1799. That is with a standard finishing kit build. So that will include a standard aluminium stem with a handlebar. These are maneuverable and movable to you to how you want it to be. So yes, to answer the question, no, they do not all come with the integrated bar and stem. The integrated bar and stem is through the bike building process, a upgrade to the bike. So your bike, if you order it, the standard build will be a normal aluminium stem and handlebar combination. One last question is, which would you recommend um, is the best role model for someone that's like a 50-year-old plus rider? It really comes down to your personal fitness and your personal cycling ability. I think if you want to future-proof your bike, if you want to do a lot of sportif rides and you want to be comfortable whilst enjoying it, I would say the R872 with a nice 28 mil tire on it in the disc model would tick all your boxes. If you're not racing it, if you're not riding it hard, if you just want to go out and enjoy a good ride with your mates, the R872 is definitely the one uh, that I would say would be the one for you. I'm just going to ask you one more quick question, then we'll move on. But um, someone has asked, we're looking to switch to a road bike after years of riding a hybrid, which would you recommend again? Oh, in that situation, definitely I would go again with the R872. The endurance, if you are migrating from a hybrid bike, which is a very upright riding position, might offer a little of nicks and pains at the start. Uh, therefore, the R872 is there to fill that market gap, to put you in a comfortable position so that you can introduce yourself into road cycling. And then, like we mentioned before, as you get more confident on the road, the endurance is there for you to step up to and add to your rebel collection. So moving on from our carbon fiber models, our Endurance SL and our R872, our road range obviously does not stop there. We have our Reynolds 725 steel frame bikes and our 6061 aluminum bikes as well, available through the product pages online as well, which goes through the bike building process where you spec out your bike your way. Starting with the Endurance 725 disc here in the front, displayed in our Pro build, which is Ultegra DR2 compatible with those Mavic Cosmic wheels, capable of taking up to a 28C tire. We know around the office we have the joke, steel is real, and definitely it comes into play here. The 725 tubing used on the bike, lightweight, very, very durable, very absorbent to road vibrations, especially on a 28C tire, will definitely add another feature to your cycling ability. And your cycling that you do around your hills. We have this model built up here coming in at nine kilograms, 9.2 kilograms, which is really, really not heavy for a steel frame bike. There's a lot of people who ride steel still, who loves the feel of it. I am personally a sucker for steel frame bikes as well, and it is a very, very comfortable bike to ride. 
We recently had a chance to write some of them. Katie rode one as well. And I'm, I don't know, Katie, about you, but I love the steel ride that we did a couple of days ago. Yeah, we went out a couple of weeks ago, um, and it was really, really nice bike to ride. It is very, very comfortable, yes. It, it actually, rolls just like a carbon bike as well. It's absorbent. It is very, very comfy to ride. So from the 725 steel frame bikes, obviously here displayed the disc model, which we have available in the two production colors, this beautiful green and yellow, and then a black and white model as well. Fully capable of building it the way that you want. As you can see, this Pro Build is DI2 compatible, so electronic shifting on the bike there for you, uh, all the way from a 105 build upwards. Uh, they are available both in the disc models and the caliper rim brake models as well. Through the product pages, you will be able to see the details on there. Moving on to the aluminium model that we have on display here. This is our aluminium disc model, which is, again, also here showcased with the R872, uh, the R7000, <laughs> apologies, group set from Shimano, the 105 group set, fully capable of taking a 28C tire as well, 25 with mud guards. So now you can hear where I'm starting to go with this winter training bike. Full mud guards, 25 seat tires is perfect for winter conditions. Uh, keeps, your, uh, keeps you dry with full mud guards on there. It does not unfortunately have a pannier rack mount, so you cannot fit the pannier rack to it, but with a backpack on and mud guards on this, a great commuter bike as well. So something that you can utilize for both purposes, both a winter trainer and commuting purposes as well then. Like we mentioned, these bikes are customizable. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, we do have the rim brake version in the aluminum range as well. The product pages is online where you can have a look at them. They are spec all the way from Sora upwards, starting at 699. It's a great bike uh, for exactly that, winter commuting uh, and winter riding. Uh, Katie, do we have any questions from our audience at home? Um, let's have a quick look now. How do the weights compare across all the road bikes? So it is very difficult to say. It is a very specific thing to say because we offer so much versatility in bike builds. It is difficult. We cannot pinpoint exactly how much a bike will weigh because of the finishing kit that you decide to put on it. All the weights will be listed on the website. So there is a plus and minus obviously with it. And all the, all the weights that is on the product pages will be from a medium size. Should you require any further information regarding a specific weight please feel free to get in touch with our Go In Store service where you can contact us straight and talk to us with a one-way video call. We will be able to give you more in-depth detail on your precise bulb that you are after. One of the questions is, can you get integrated bars on the steel range? On the steel range, unfortunately not. The integrated bar and stem from the level five is only specific to our carbon models, our CGR SL, which we will cover in a couple of minutes our endurance SL, our endurance SL range as well. Those three models are the only ones who is uh, capable of taking the level five integrated bar and stem. It is a design. So obviously with Reynolds Steel, uh, the, the 725 tubing, your tubing profile does not allow for cables to go internally into the fork. So therefore it is only to that select couple of models. I wanted a bike that was really versatile. I'm predominantly a road rider, so it, you know, mainly it would be set up for road, but I've got the option to stick some gravel tires on there and go a bit more off road. I've got the option to maybe go bike touring on it. It's a great commute option because it's, you know, it just does a bit of everything. Versatility really. So time on the bike usually is, is my time and it's a good escape. Clear your head and just get out and explore and find new routes. And it does have that adventure feel for me that I can go out and, and go to places I've not been before. It started off as a hobby. Uh, probably closely becoming a, an obsession rather than a hobby now. 
spending more time on a bike than I do off a bike these days and just ride to enjoy it. If I don't enjoy it, I don't do it. I suppose the good thing about the CGR is that it is as happy going out with the dog on the trails as it is, you know, joining joining up with a group ride, going out on the road. Uh, it's it literally will do do anything that you that you want it to do, really. I commute on a CGR. Uh, I've got the AL version, bright orange. Uh, it's running a Shimano 105 group set. Got Axiom wheels on there and G1 tyres because you know you can go anywhere on them. They're not draggy on the road. You can quite happily tap along at 21, 22 mile an hour. Good gearing ratios on it. So compact on the front for the steep climbs. Nice wide ranging cassette on the rear. Just perfect for commuting, really. I love all the sort of open countryside stuff. Almost feels like Belgium, even though it's in the northwest in, in Lancashire. It gives me that versatility to be able to uh, ride on the road with your regular road riders, but then also uh, go and take it off road when I feel like it. Considering I've got 650B wheels, I do pretty well. Um, I can go really fast if I want to. Uh, keeping up with guys on the road at like 18 mile an hour if I wanted. Um, but I've got the comfort when I want to be able to just cruise. I cruise for a long distance on my own. I call it my mobile meditation. So I'll just get on the bike, go out for a ride, clears my mind, have fun. I've met loads of people doing it and, and you know, I'm part of like a, a really nice community now. So yeah, I, it's, it's a massive part of my life and it's my enjoyment, my hobby. For me now, being on the bike is about making sure when I'm on the bike, I'm enjoying myself. And I think that's where the CGR comes in because I like to explore, adventure, find new routes, set off in a direction I might not know exactly where I'm going. In doing that, you don't know what kind of terrain you're going to come across. Yeah, there's no such thing as bad weather, as they say. It's just bad clothing. As long as you've got mud guards on the bike. Uh, yeah, a bit of rain isn't handy at all. If the weather's poor, I'll stick to the rows. <laughs> if it's a bit nicer, a bit drier, I uh, can go down the, the canal towpath, go a little bit further afield and get a bit more adventurous. So as you can tell from that exciting video of the product, without anticipation, our CGR range, that is our cross gravel road range. This range has proved to be very, very versatile and very, very well accepted by you, the cyclists. Uh, we are going to look at the family. They, all four models share the same core, the same values. We have them in the 725 Reynolds steel frame, the, the, the steel is real frame. Uh, then our 6061 aluminium frame, our titanium frame, and then our CGR SL in that carbon frame model displayed here with that custom color again, which is available through the bike building process. These bikes, the versatility of them comes in exactly, uh, comes into play with exactly that word, the versatility of it. Um, with two wheel sets, you can have a 700C road bike, and with a 650B wheel set, you can have a fully capable gravel bike. To take you on those towpath rides, off-road riding uh, on the gravel roads that you are going to do. I know, Katie, you have got the uh, CGR tie. I myself has got the, I've got the, the CGR 725, uh, the steel frame bike, uh, which I have two wheel sets with. I mean, uh, Katie, you've ridden yours now for a couple of months. And what's your feeling on the titanium frame that you've got? Yeah, I, I really like it. So I've got the same as what you're suggesting. I've got two sets of wheels, two so I just sets. easily just switch them out. And it's been so good to have in winter. Yeah. Um, really comfortable. I've got like 28 mil tires on there. Yeah. And then for my um, gravel and offer, I've just got tubeless set up. So it's just really easy just to switch out those wheels. You've That's got it. two completely different um, it, yeah. abilities to be able to ride. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. With gravel being such a big thing at the moment as well, everybody's riding gravel bikes. These bikes really come into play. I mean, we have customers uh, 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 contacting us and talking to us about, you know, I've got a winter bike and I want a road bike, a, a gravel bike as well. What do I do? And this is where the CGR comes into play. I know us as cyclists don't want to hear the phrase that one bike can do everything, but these guys really do one uh, do a lot of that. If you are living in a small one-bedroom flat, maybe in London somewhere, or you don't have the space to store more than two or three bikes, the CGR comes into play. Like we mentioned, the gravel riding at the moment, this model that we've got here displayed today, it's got those 650B wheels on with those byway tires, those, those go-anywhere tires from WTB, and then displayed with that GRX group set from uh, Shimano, the 1x11 gravel-specific group set that they have recently launched. We have test ridden these bikes, we have rode them, and they are so, so, so versatile. Like Katie mentioned, she's got her, which she uses both in the winter and then for, uh, for, for gravel rides. And that's exactly what I'm doing with my 725 as well. The two wheel sets, a road wheel set and a gravel wheel set. We are a group of people here from Ribble who's going to uh, do the Dirty Reaver, which has now been postponed to September. And all of us is taking our CDRs that we're going to go ride the Dirty Reaver with. Very exciting times that these bikes do. I'm sure we've got a lot of questions regarding this great model. So please let me have some questions so that I can answer them for you. Right, so how many racks or bags can you get onto those bikes if you want to do some kind of like... That is a packing? very, very good question. So the entire CGR family comes with rack mounts uh, for those short weekend touring trips and, and, and long rides that you want to go and do. So with a rack mount, you are able to fit the two pannier bags and maybe a, a, a trunk bag on the top of the carrier, depending on how much luggage you want to, go, you want to take with you. Remembering, obviously, that the weight limits are restricted by your specific rack, which is around 25 kilograms. But yes, the CGR is more than capable of taking both full mud guards and a pannier rack. And then the beauty of it all, in a 700C, taking up to a 45 millimeter tire and 650B up to a two inch tire. Now, that is a vast amount of tire and grip on the road, especially off road and especially for touring, for being comfortable. One of the questions is, how does a CGR compare to the endurance for road, paved, or trail riding? Again, the endurance SL is our racer, is our carbon racer. The CGR comes back more into play into that comfort bike, that sportive setup of a bike. When you look at the range, again, you can see it's got a very long head tube, placing your ride height on the front end much higher than you would have on a traditional road bike like the endurance, which is for getting in a tucked in aerodynamic position. So yes, even though they can be taken on the road and used as a road bike, like myself and Katie is doing with our bikes as well, they put you in a very comfortable position. We did a sportif here in Lancashire a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I did the 72 mile and it was a very comfortable bike to finish up and have a couple of beers with the mates afterwards. It really is not an aggressive ride. It's a very comfortable position that the bike places you into. So yes, the CGR can be used for that purpose as well not just for your gravel and road use, but for sportive riding as well. Um, and do we offer the frame only in the CGR range? We do most definitely. If you go through our website, you will find under the frame sets that the CGRs are available there. From the SL, the, the, the titanium, the 725 steel and the aluminium is all online available as frame sets only to be purchased. One last question. So thinking, um, Steve says, thinking of going over to a gravel bike, but would normally want to come into the showroom for sizing on the jig. Is there anything um, we can do online to assist? With Most definitely. We can assist you as far as possible. It is difficult to see you, but through getting information from you, we are able to assist uh, fairly confidently. Obviously, we cannot see you and we cannot put you on the jig. So we have limitations with that. But if you contact us through our going source service, our experts online can get information from you, your inseam leg length, your hip length, and we can mock that up in the showroom. We are living in difficult times at the moment, but we can make these things happen. So please come through with your questions. Use our call service. We are happy to assist. One other question is, uh, with the custom colour, um, what are the options for that and how customizable can we actually get on those bikes? Those are limitless. I was informed by our website team the other day that if you put all the combinations together, you've got almost three and a half million choices to make. So that is how customizable it is. It, it all comes down to time. How much time do you have to sit and play 
on the customizer to get your color your way, the way that you want it to be. No more questions at the minute? Yes. Another question? No? All right, we're going to cut to another video again quickly, shortly. I'll see you in a couple of seconds. So moving on from our CGR range, which we have just had a look at, uh, and we've covered the road aspect and the gravel aspect of our range so far, that is not where we stop. We at Ribble obviously cater for all riders, for all cyclists out there, even if you just want to enjoy cycling, if you want to start off cycling. So over here on display, we have our two trail bike, our two aluminium hybrid bikes, which is also available through our online store that you can have a look at and spec out to your desired spec. Starting with the hybrid trail over here, we can see it comes with a 29-inch wheel, that 1x11 group set with a coil front suspension fork. It also has a lockout mechanism, making the fork go from a rigid to a suspension fork on the handlebars there with the 11-speed gearing and hydraulic disc brakes as well. The hybrid AL over here, fully loaded version online, will come with a pannier rack and a full mud guard. Perfect for going into town, for doing the shopping, or just for riding around. These bikes have been uh, the, in the market, placed in the market with the leisure rider at the point, at the mark. Uh, if you are looking for a bike that you can stick on the back of the camper, that you can put on a roof rack to go away to the coast for the weekend, something to have to, tra to, to travel around at your final destination, that's where these bikes come into play. These bikes come into play in your city commuters as well. With the gearing options, the hydraulic disc brakes, the pannier racks, the mud guards, they are perfect for the, the, the cyclist who wants to commute but not want to aggressively cycle, who don't want to do the sport heats, who don't, who's not interested in going on long Sunday club runs. These bikes are there for you. They are online. They are starting at 699 as well. So please have a look at the product pages where you will be able to find all the product details and then again get in touch with us through our Go Install service or our uh, channels online for further questions. Do we have some questions on these? Katie, I don't know. Sorry, I'm not looking at the screens. Do we have some questions on this model? So who would you necessarily say that these are the, who would you, who would be the rider for this type of bike? Yes. So, so, so again, like we mentioned just now, these bikes are aimed for those people who want to commute and who's not aggressive cyclists. If you are not migrating from an aluminium to a carbon frame or from a sportive carbon frame to a racier carbon model, or you're not interested in doing gravel racing and gravel rides, these bikes are for you. Fully capable of going off-road and riding hard, compact tow paths, these bikes offer you a more of a leisure approach to, approach to uh, cycling. Uh, these bikes are very comfortable. They've got a very nice geometry on them with long head tubes, a high ride height on the front, uh, placing you in a very, very comfortable position for leisure riding, as you can see from the two. Perfect. Jenny's just asked, I'm five foot five. Would I fit on a hybrid? I really love the green one. Five foot five. The small frame, extra small frame. Is it Jenny? Is it Jenny? Jenny? Yes. Yes, Jenny. I think yes, most definitely. That would be a very good fit for you. If you have further hesitations regarding that, please feel free to get in touch. But yes, at five foot five, extra small. We have a colleague who's five foot five and she's on an extra small frame. So yes, definitely. The green one is beautiful. This is also available in two production colors, both this beautiful green and then a plain black one, fully customizable as well to certain limitations with saddles and handlebar grips. Uh, you will find them all through the online store. Perfect. So we're going to cut to another video while we make some changes with the rest of our range. You know, you, 
the uh, power it generates straight away. It's incredible, isn't it? So smooth. Oh, I could do this all day now. <laughs> so I could do this all day. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we want four. Mind me, it's getting more than 60 miles a day. The assistance is quite large. It's lovely, I'll have six. Bloody hell, that's lovely. <laughs> this is so smooth. It's unreal. You'd never noticed that this was an electric bike. Well, I can lift it up. One hundred. So moving on into our range, our very anticipated, and I think a lot of viewers has been waiting for this moment, our e-bike range. As you can see, off the eye looking not like e-bikes, at all. All three of the models we have covered already, our Carbon Fiber Endurance SLE, here displayed in that beautiful custom color, the Purple Fate, to the Anthracite Gray. This is a top of the range spec model. This bike comes in at 11.2 kilograms, which is very, very lightweight, as you can hear, for an e-bike. Uh, moving on to our CGR ALE over here, and our Hybrid ALE. Um, I'm rushing through them because I want to get to the specifications of the bike. All three of these bikes share the same geometry as their non-E uh, brothers. So the SLE to the CGR AL and the hybrid AL will all share the same geometry. The difference obviously comes in with that electronic power assistance, which is what I want to focus on. Fully customizable, these bikes are available online through the online store that you can have a look at and spec out to your desired choice. So moving on to that. As we can see, they don't look like e-bikes at all. I mean, if I was pulling up to the cafe with this, um, I'm sure a couple of people will have to do a double take to see if it is actually an e-bike. And yes, the system we're making use of is that e-bike motion X35 drivetrain, which is a hub-driven motor, which offers the rider 250 watts of electronic pedal assist power. So it's not a direct boost of power. You have to keep on pedaling in order for it to work. Hence the reason we went with that system, because at the end of the day, these are still bikes. We still want to ride them. We don't want to get on and just use a little throttle, uh, 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 throttle to ride. Otherwise, we would have bought mopeds. So yes, they are still bikes, and um, they are uh, there for us to still ride. So the X35 system, being Bluetooth compatible, like I mentioned, offers you that 250 watts of pedal assist power over the three modes. Those three modes are not a preset system. Through Bluetooth and through a smartphone app, you, the rider, will connect to your bike and you will tell it how much power assistance you want in each of those three modes. They are indicated through a color button, the iWalk button on the top tube of the bike where you will filter through your modes and then that will also give you a visual feedback of the mode you are in and how much battery power is left on the system. With the freedom of this product, you can use it the way you want it. If you want 100% assistance in all of your modes, then you set it to that. If you want lower assistance in your modes, you set it to that. These are tools that have been used to let cyclists ride longer, let cyclists ride farther, and enjoy the sport for longer as well. The customer base of these guys are not just a certain category of cyclists, but it is across all um, uh, ages. It's across all demographics of cyclists enjoying them. Another feature of the bike, which is very, very key to enjoying the sport for longer, and our brand ambassador, Sean Yates, uses it this way as well, is through connecting a heart rate strap through the Bluetooth connectivity to the bike where you actually set your power assistance levels according to your beats per minute. So a very vital instrument to use through not just training, but also through riding your bike and enjoying the sport 
much longer. With it said, being Bluetooth compatible, a lot of the questions that we get every time is range. What is the range of the bike, Yaku? How far can I ride? It's very difficult to say. Because you are in charge of the bike and the settings of the bike, we cannot give you an estimation or an exact number of how far you can expect to ride the bike. We don't know your topography, how steep your hills are. You are the one who knows that. So through trial and error, you will be able to evaluate what power settings it needs to be in and how far you can ride on a specific charge. But through our research and development here at Ribble, through riding the bikes ourselves and from your testimonials, your our customer-based testimonials, we have come to the, the, the generic answer of saying that on a full charge with a certain setting of about 30%, 60%, and 90% over the, over the three modes, you can expect a range of more or less between 65 and 70 miles. Now, that is a great, great range, especially if you're thinking about the purpose of the bike. It is still a bike. It will allow you to ride much further, much farther with the power assistance on. Now, Katie, I'm sure we have quite a lot of folks who's got some questions on these bikes. If I haven't covered some of the answers already, so please, let's hear some of our viewers' questions. So Steve has asked, what's the weight limit on the hybrid ALE? The weight limit of the hybrid ALE, like we said, Steve, weight limits comes down really to wheel manufacturers. And these wheels by Mavic is strong enough to carry a rider weight uh, uh, that has a weight limit of 120 kilograms on them. Uh, another question is, how does the Ribble e-bike system compare to, like, say, the Bosch system? The Bosch system is a very, very good system out in the market. It offers a lot of watts and it offers a lot of rider comfort as well. Our system, and like I mentioned, the reason we went with the e-bike motion system is for it to look like a traditional bike. The weight factor as well comes into play. There are certain systems out in the market that weighs quite a lot. The e-bike motion system, if you take the components out the bike, only weighs 3.5 kilograms, which keeps the bike not only looking traditional, but keeping it lightweight as well. So we said that our SLE comes in at 11.2 kilograms. Our CGR ALE comes in at only 13.6 kilograms. So both great systems, the Bosch and the e-bike motion system are great systems. The reason we, de we decided to, went to go with that is because of the aesthetic looks and the weight. One other ge um, general question that we're getting is, is there any delivery time impact on ordering um, and being delivered um, at the minute? At the moment, obviously, with the situation we are in, we are experiencing some delivery delays. That is a very good question. Please feel free to drop a mail to our customer service line where we will be answered, able to answer your specific product that you require in more detail. If you do go online, uh, the website is updated daily, so you will be able to see which models are in stock, where we're waiting for stock to arrive, and how long deliveries and builds will take. Any further questions? That's it for I'm now. sure we do have some. Oh, one, Carl, one's just coming. Carl says, how do you charge these e-bikes? E oh, that's a very good question. So with that battery being in the frame, built into the down tube over here, there is a central charging port right above the BB over there. So you will get your compatible charger with the bike, uh, and you will charge the bike up until it is full. Uh, recommendations from the manufacturers, e-bike motion says not to overcharge the battery. We have charged them here at HQ from about 8% to 100% in less than two hours. So it is not a long charge. And then as we discussed through your power settings, you can get quite a long distance from that charge um, on the e-bike. Any um, more questions? This is the website say seven days delivery. Um, if I order an in-stock bike today, will I get it in seven days? Yes, most definitely. Our product team is working very hard, and you will be able to receive that. Um, David's also asked, can I buy a battery extender? Most definitely, yes. The battery extender from eBike Margin. I didn't even see it there. Thank you very much. <laughs> so the battery extender over here is available as a retail item on the accessories page online. You are also able to select this from the bike builder with your initial order. The range extender does exactly that. 
it offers you an extended range to the primary battery which is in the bike. This will not give you more power, it will not give you more assistance, it will in, it just give you another charge of battery so that you can ride further on your primary battery as well. Nicole has also asked, does the hybrid e-bike come with a pannier rack? The hybrid e-bike does come with a pannier rack. Nicole, you will see online that we have the fully loaded version over there as well. This display model has just got the mud guards as an added accessory. But yes, the fully loaded version will come with a bell, mud guards, and a pannier rack with lights, both for the front and the back, included in that price. Ron has also asked, can I get flat bars on the CGR ALE? The flat bars on the CGR ALE, unfortunately not at the moment, Yvonne, uh, hence why we have the hybrid version available there. So the CGR ALE will just come with the drop bars or the flared bars as displayed on this model over here. Do we have some more questions? Uh, Just asked. talking through the bike while we're waiting for questions to come in. Again, the versatility of the CGR comes into play. I want to focus on that. You will see on the product pages that we have the two builds, both in the 650B wheel build and in the 700C wheel build as well. Um, these will not have an effect of the power delivery of the bike. So depending on the tire choices you select, we do get the question, if I go 650B, will my range be shorter? No, it will not you will still get the same amount of power because of the roll resistance on the bikes. You will still have the same experience on that. Katie, you had a question just before. Yeah, um, are demo bikes available? Demo bikes is available. Obviously, unfortunately, our showrooms are closed at the moment, so we will not be able to offer you any demo rides, but we do, once everything has cleared up, you're more than welcome to come to our Preston HQ where we will be able to offer you demo rides on the demo fleet as well. Ben has also asked, can you turn the battery on and off to extend the range? You can most definitely, Ben. That's a very, a very good question as well. In ride, you can turn the system off completely and use the bike as a normal traditional bike. The hub-driven motor lives on its own free hub, so there is very, very little, if any, resistance on that rear wheel whilst you're riding it in off mode. If you do feel that you want to turn it off, but that kicker of a hill comes too quickly, the system itself Apart from mode one, two, and three has a mode zero, which offers you no electronic assistance, but the bike remains on. So therefore, you can descend as normal, ride as normal, and just when you need it, tap the button once to go into your first assistance level mode. But yes, you can turn the bike off completely and ride it as a normal bike. Danny's asked, can I attach a basket to the front of the hybrid e-bike? You can, Danny, and you will be one of the very few people who have one. So yes, you can. They are on our bike builder available on the hybrid ALE. And uh, they are they absolutely look stunning. It's like a beautiful little wicker basket. You will love it. You will love it. Perfect for shopping as well. Uh, Nathan has just asked, is the main battery replaceable? The main battery most definitely is. You will receive a two-year warranty on the product itself. So under warranty purposes, you will be able to remove that battery and replace it. Uh, Cost-wise, unfortunately, we haven't had to do it yet, so we don't know how much it will cost. But obviously, under warranty, it will be covered for you. They are removable. They are held together in the frame with three little lugs, which is underneath there, to keep it into place from keeping it rattling and uh, annoying you while cycling. So yes, but it is removable. There's an access hatch right at the bottom of the BB to where the battery slides in and out of the frame. Perfect. It doesn't seem like we have more questions from the team around. So we are going to cut to another video and then uh, look at some more of our range.
So moving on to more of a specialist field now, as you can see by the two bikes here behind me, um, we at Dribble obviously have our time trial bikes, our triathlon time trial bikes, and our track bikes as well. Displayed in the Eliminator here, the aluminium track bike, and then the TT time trial uh, triathlon bike displayed here as well. These bikes are available. They are more of a specialist market, so you, the athlete, will know exactly what you are looking for. You will find them on the product pages where you will be able to customize them and build them your way as well. These guys are also available through Custom Color, which is a great, great added feature. We had a youngster come to get a track bike a couple of weeks ago, and he had it sprayed in his club colors. So a very proud moment for him when he picked up his track bike in the specific colors to his need, to his, to his want that he wanted to be. But yes, as we can see from our triathlon bike here, the bike will come fully equipped with a hydration bottle in the front, a top tube feeding bag, which is removable, and a rear tool bottle, which is also removable. These bikes have got a uh, threaded BSA BB in them for stiffness. No, they've got pressed BBs in them. Sorry, my apologies. Um, for stiffness and for power transfer onto the bikes as well. These bikes, like I said, is very specific. They are fully adjustable in the front end, offering you a lot of comfort over long distance riding. But yes, you will have to get your sizing right. Uh, the easiest way to describe these products is through questions. So if you have questions, please uh, fire them my way so I can answer them for you. Um, they are fully carbon, very lightweight, very aerodynamic. If you look at these bikes from the front, it's like a blade cutting through the air. Again, this is the same chassis that our pro team races on as well. So, yes, feel free to throw some questions. So there's a lot of aero testing went into the, into the design of the bikes. What makes them so aerodynamic? The design itself and the blade itself. So from a design point of view, we have looked at all the aspects from the aerodynamic testing that we have done. Uh, the width of the fork, the shape of the bottle, the shape of the frame. Everything went into it. There was a lot of time that went into the design and development of these bikes. And uh, then we, we tested them as well. It was given to our pro team to be tested. And with their feedback, we sat together and we constructed these bikes. Um, so, yeah. Um, what are the additional options for the tri bike? Additional options to the bike. Basically, the bike that you see is how you will get it from a chassis point of view. They will come standard with that group set that is online on the product page spec with a standard wheel set as well. So additional specs that you can do to the bikes will be wheels, it will be um, drivetrain systems, electronic gearing systems, uh, saddle choices that will be all available for you there. So a lot, like our range goes through our bike building process, a lot of choices and a lot of changes you can make. The bikes also come with both aluminium aero extensions and carbon fiber extensions, depending on your choice of riding on what you want to do. Um, like I said, these models are very vast. The same frame is used for both our time trial bike builds as well. So the frame will not change that much. It will be the front end of the bike. The fork will change to be UCI legal in time trialing to, uh, to fit the time trial bike build. And then obviously the bladed front fork, as you see it here for triathlon purposes as well. Um, so yes, we have had these bikes through athletes breaking records as well. We have triathletes, half Ironman and Ironman champions on these bikes. So um, yes. Another question is coming from Matt saying, what's the difference between the tri and the TT bike? So like we just mentioned now, the big differences will be the front fork. The front fork to be TT time trial UCI legal is much more narrower, much more aerodynamically shaped to fit the UCI legalization of it. That is the big difference. And then obviously all the add-ons will not be there. The hydration bottle is not on the time trial build, as is the feeding top tube bag will not be on the time trial build. Your base bar and aero extensions will also be different to the time trial build to the try build. Um, on the product pages, you will be able to see and read about, excuse me, the differences between the two bikes. John just asked, what is going on with the saddle? What is going the, on with the? The saddle. The saddle. Yeah, on that bike. It's more so that is a time trial saddle, John. It's the ISM time trial saddle. Uh, very comfortable. Uh, the PN 1.1 um, 
it is a time trial saddle. So the, the two rails move independently from each other. You can imagine if you're doing a full Ironman over 190 kilometer course, uh, that yes, you are. It's, it's a long time in the saddle to sit for. So these saddles are, have been designed for triathlon in mind, being comfortable. So yes. <laughs> and Andrew's just asked, how do we manage to keep prices so low in comparison to other bike brands? Definitely. Very good uh, question, Andrew. We are a direct-to-consumer online uh, retailer, Andrew. Therefore, we do not have that middleman. So you buying direct from us. Behind me is the warehouse where the bikes are being built. So they go from being built to you collecting them in our showrooms. So therefore, the prices is as competitive as they can be. Just going back to the saddle, someone has asked, can I change my saddle choice? You can, most definitely. You, if you have a look online and if you get in touch with our uh, uh, customer service team and our bike production teams, we will be able to offer you differences. We have uh, in our range the Pro Logo Dimension saddle as well, which is a short nose, wide wing saddle, which is perfect for time trialing and triathlons as well. So we could offer you a vast array of saddles available. Also another question is, can the eliminator be used on the road? That's from Robert. You can, Robert, online. Uh, uh, Robert, you can use it on the road. Uh, it is a track bike, however. So you will not have brake mounts on it, which you do require to have it on the road for. Please, Robert, have a look at our 725 single speed, our S, under the hybrid section of the website, where you will be able to find a single speed with brakes and brake mounts for road use. Um, the Eliminator is more of a specialist, like we said, specialist track bike rather than a road commuter fixie. So please have a look at the 725S, Robert, online. One last question is from Andy saying, I've seen the TTR frame online too. What's the difference? The TTR frame is the frame set. It's just the frame set between the two. It's the same frame set used for both, like we said, the tri time trial and the triathlon. So yes. No more questions at the minute. Perfect. We're going to cut away to a video again and then move on with the range. So moving on into our range, we're now moving a bit more off-road and a bit more adventure. Uh, before we get started on the mountain bikes, obviously we can see some mountain bikes there. Let me quickly discuss the CX bikes that we also have in our range. You will find them online through uh, uh, on our website store. The CX SL here displayed that monocoque carbon construction, lightweight, race-ready cyclocross bike. Uh, UCI legal to take tires up onto a 33 millimeter. Uh, with a uh, tapered BSA screw in VB for optimized power transfer as well over there. The drop seat stays, as we can see, being brought over from our endurance SL range with that vertical compliance on there. And then obviously you yeah, featured in our Pro Build with the DI2 shifting and the carbon level wheels, uh, the tubular level wheels. If you go through the online store, you will see that we have our AL version available as well uh, for you to select. The differences between these guys and road bikes obviously comes into the geometry into play. Uh, these bikes are cyclocross racers. They have got a bigger triangle for picking up and shouldering the bikes uh, for, um, for cyclocross racing when the season returns again. 
Um, fully compatible with our level five integrated bar and stem there as well. We can see aesthetically keeping that front end nice and clean, nice and tidy, especially when you have to clean it afterwards. We all know that the wires and the housing of the hydraulic hoses gets in the way, especially through cyclocross racing. So this is a nice way to keep that nice and clean with the housing in the frame. We're now moving on to our adventure series over here, which we have displayed in the 725 adventure bike. The sister to this guy is the, seven, uh, the adventure tie, which is also available online through our store. These bikes have been built and designed for long distance touring at mind, in mind. You can load lots of luggage on this. You can disappear for five weeks and just have everything you need on your bike, ready to go for the next adventure. Fully compatible for frame bags. We've got a top tube feeding bag. As you can see, fork bag mounts as well. So any luggage that you think that you can put on the bike is available. Again, taking that weight limits into consideration. These wheels again from Mavic come with a weight limitation of 120 kilograms. So with that said, keeping it safe, you know, at the end of the day, it's about how much luggage you can put on there. You do have a nice white tie and a 2.8 uh, size there for, on a 650B wheel. So, yes, I, I'm sure if we have questions on those, we'll come to those now, Katie. But let me move on to our uh, HT um, tie over here and our HT725. The two sharing the same geometry and then obviously with uh, trail riding in mind. We can see off the eye from the bikes that they are hardtail mountain bikes. They are 650B built, capable of taking up to a 2.6 inch tire. And then with that 42 millimeter head tube at a 60 degree angle, making it nice and super slack, uh, capable of taking a 150 millimeter front fork. So these guys have BSA bottom brackets, threaded bottom brackets to keep it nice and, nice and sturdy, nice and, nice and stiff and easy to clean with the gussets on the high tension points there as well to keep the frame compliant and ready, nice and planted on the trails, on the tracks. The triple butted 3AL 2.5V titanium frame, lightweight, strong and durable, ready for you to take it out on the trails. On the HT725, we can see that here uh, is a purple color combination going on the bike. Through the bike building process, you are able to choose one of seven different color packs to make your HT725 your way. So that is our adventure, our HT bikes and our adventure range. Katie, do we have any questions from our viewers? Yeah, so I've got a question. Um, Frame-wise, the Endurance SL looks diff quite similar, I mean, to the Cross. What would be the main differences between them? So like we said, the differences then the, the, comes into the geometry, the, the geometry into play. The cyclocross bike has been designed for cyclocross racing. It's got a wider front fork for mud clearance and for keeping the wheels turning both in the front and the rear. The compliance of that vertical down uh, down the C-tube as well. The biggest differences, like we said, is that central triangle for shouldering and for picking up the bike. Uh, so between the Endurance SL and the CX SL, there is quite a, a, a difference in designs between the two bikes. Uh, the BB height is also higher on the CX for that purpose of cyclocross racing rather than road racing. Jax has just asked, what's the benefit of the loop bar on the Adventure 725? Uh, it comes into sitting position and luggage, Jackson. Obviously the D bar here displayed, you can see um, offers you a lot of different hand positions on the bike itself. It also offers you a nice position to mount your mount, uh, your lights and your GPS units to a nice frame back to go onto the front and ultimately that more comfortable long distance riding position on the adventure. These are also uh, in uh, the pre-spec on the product pages available with drop bars where you will be able to order them as well with the flared bars and the drop bars. Rob has asked as well, just how much stronger is titanium to the 725 steel? The, the difference in the strength really, Robert, comes down to the material. So titanium we know is very lightweight, very, very strong material to use. Um, if you are asking if you're going to break it, I'm going to say you're going to have to try really hard. But yes, the titanium obviously doesn't have a strength uh, superiority 
uh, not only just that, but it also it comes into the weight factor of the two. So the titanium frame there coming in at only 2.4, 2.6 kilograms on the frame set alone. So yes, very lightweight frame set over the 725 steel. Ben has asked, how comfortable is the CXSL for longer distances? Um, he's debating between that and then the basically between the endurance or the cross. Yeah, Ben, that, that is a good question, and that will come down to your personal flexibility and how you ride. Obviously, the CX has been designed for that 30-minute burst of a race that you are going to do. It wasn't designed for long-distance riding. It wasn't designed for, for, for uh, uh, Audax rides or things like that. So it will really come down to you, how flexible you are, your personal performance. Uh, I personally would not advise to use the CX as a road bike just because of that pure geometry setup of the bike. Um, the endurance SL will come more, uh, but will be a more comfortable ride to ride over long distances rather than the CX. Rob has asked, and this is a, a couple of the same questions that we're getting in about frame sizing. Yeah. Um, so he's asked for him, obviously, you know, you can't see him, but he said he's five foot 11. Which frame size would he want for a hardtail? On the mountain bikes? Yeah. Okay, so five foot 11. Again, without seeing you, I am going to put you on a large frame. I'm 5'8", and you can see me. I ride the medium frame, which is very, very comfortable for me. But that's me personally. Uh, so it really comes down to, to where you find it more comfortable. But at 5'11", I would say large. Uh, Isaac's asked, can you run a 160 mil fork on the hardtail? Uh, you can. You are going to have a slightly different geometry on the bike, though. But if you want to go higher in the front end, most definitely you can. Your wheelbase is going to be ever so slightly longer. Uh, but yes, you can. That's it for the questions at the minute. Outstanding. Perfect. So we are going to cut to a video again, and then we are going to go to a live Q&A. Perfect. So we are going to take a couple of minutes to take your live questions. I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Uh, so please start firing away any questions that you might have. We are able to take them. They are coming through live. I believe there's quite a few questions coming through. So Katie, once you're ready, you can start asking some questions. We're going to take a couple of them and then uh, we will continue answering questions through our live chat and through our uh, email services and our going store service. So please. So Ian has asked, how would I decide between the SL or the SLR? Ian, that is a question I get asked on a daily basis. Uh, the SLR obviously will offer you a much more stiffer, much more lightweight ride feel. Uh, the Endurance SL will come into play where you want a more uh, a bike that is has good quality components and a good ride feel on it. But obviously, we don't want to tell the wife exactly how much we paid for the bike. Ian. So yes, that will be the two differences mainly I would say come into play there. So like, where do you want to set your ceiling at? You know, the SLR is a great bike, as is the SL. It will really come down to your personal choice that you want to do. Uh, read about the product pages online. Have a look at the differences. Read what the pro team is saying about them on our blog as well. You'll be able to see what the pro team's comment is on the bikes. And then make a conscious decision from there uh, on which one to go for. Ian, just if this helps, I had the exact same debate of whether to get the SL or the SLR, but because I don't race, um, I went for the SL. That was the main reason. I think if I race, I would have gone for the SLR. There we um, go. But I don't race, so the SL is just I really. So the really SL happy is the it. perfect one for you. Outstanding. That's it. Yeah, that's a that's a very vital, a, a good answer there. Yeah, I actually went out the other day. Nice, sunny weather to get out and enjoy it. You've so. got the SL, Katie, don't yeah, you? Yeah, the SL. Really lovely yeah. bike. Yeah. Um, it is a great bike to ride. 
Uh, another quick question is, are we still processing cycle to work vouchers? We most definitely are accepting cycle to work vouchers. We are. Uh, it will come down to your employer when they sign them off and when they issue them out. So please get in touch with your own HR department with what is happening now. Um, obviously, it is a good thing to check up on your cycle to work scheme vouchers if you are eligible for it. And then obviously, like I mentioned, have a chat with your HR department. They are the ones who will issue them out to you. Andy has asked, what's the upper weight limit of the Endurance SL with the Cosmic Pro Carbons? Uh, so, yes, the one we had on display with the DI2 on it, that is a nice and lightweight bike that comes in at around 7.8 kilograms. So uh, that is worth that BSA threaded bottom bracket. Not a very heavy bike at all. Um, yes, our standard builds uh, with a R7105 group set on it comes in at about 8.4 kilos. So it is not a heavy bike at all. Tony has asked, are the level three handlebars the same shape as the level five integrated bars? Uh, Tony, in the level three, we have the two options of carbon handlebar, a standard round one, and then we have the level three carbon aero bar, which shares the same shape to the level five integrated bar. It also has a semi-integration of both the hydraulic hoses and the cable gear, gear, gear housings in the handlebar. So you could have that semi aesthetic look of a nice and clean cockpit in the front. Uh, the difference between the two, however, is on the level three handlebar and stem combination, you are able to make changes to your setup, whereas on level five, you will be restricted to the setup of the stem and the handlebar as it is. Peter's asked, can I upgrade to integrated bars at a later date? You can most definitely, Peter. You can change your standard handlebar and stem if you have your SL, SL disc you can change that to a level five integrated bar and stem. Uh, feel free to get in touch with our customer service team where they will be able to process an order for you. Uh, you will have to bear in mind that everything will have to come out the bike, the hydraulic hoses, the gear cables, uh, and they will have to be put back in. So think about gear housing, hydraulic hoses, mineral oil. Um, you need to get new um, uh, the seals on the hydraulic hose connections into the calipers. So yes. But you can do it, yes. Catherine has asked, how long does it take to get a custom colour bike? Catherine, a custom colour bike takes 28 working days from the order has been received. To that, we will add an additional 14 days for production of the bike. So we're looking at about a month and a little bit uh, from order received to then basically having back to you. Again, coming, exc exclaiming on the point that we are, we want to make it very known that we obviously are experiencing delays in uh, transport and couriering of certain components and parts. So please bear with us. But yes, we aim to get it to you as soon as possible within that 28 day period. Simon has asked, how do the level wheels compare? The level wheels compare very, very well, Simon. They have done tests on them as well, in, both in the wind tunnel and through riding them. Our level wheels are very, very good manufactured wheels with an oversized hub on the rear wheel on the drive side, giving you perfect power transfer. I have ridden them myself as well, and I cannot fault them. They are great wheels to ride. Mike has asked, what kind of assembly is required once the bike arrives? Uh, Mike, recently, over the last couple of two days, actually, if you go and follow our Instagram channel, we had a couple of customers actually posting exactly how long it took them to get their bikes out the box. And the average that we're looking at is about four minutes. So you will literally take the bike out the box, you will fit your handlebars, you will fit your seat post with your saddle and your pedals, and you will be ready to go. The gears will be indexed, the tires will be pumped up. It's just a matter of getting it out the box and getting on and going for a ride. Also, do we do demo days? We did touch on that a little bit earlier on, but do we do demo days? That is a very good question. Yes, we most definitely do do demo days, guys. Again, we have a schedule on our blog, if you go and have a look at that, of upcoming events that is scheduled at this moment in time. Obviously, the future will dictate where that will go to, but we do most definitely do demo days. Do we also offer finance on the bike? We do, definitely. That is a payment option through the checkout service where you will be redirected to V12, who is the official lender. They will then give you an application form to complete, to which you will then be either approved or um, referred to for finance applications, but we do offer the finance through V12 uh, on our bike purchases. 
Also, someone's asked, which bike is comfy to ride, the Endurance AL or the CGR AL? Personal opinion, the CGR, always, just because I have one. I know, Katie, you've got one as well. Yeah. We love them. <laughs> but again, that is a very tricky question. Depending on your cycling that you are doing, depending on where you are riding, you could prefer the AL over the, the, the CGR, the CGR over the, 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 the Endurance. Um, for me personally, it is the, the CGR. I personally have lower back issues and lower neck, neck issues when I ride my bike, well, when I ride my bike. So uh, the CGR offers me just a better sitting position. Um, yes, so it will come down to your personal choice. Can I get a bike sent internationally? You can most definitely. If you uh, go to our website, right at the bottom of the page, you will find a delivery section where all the countries are listed to which we can ship to and to which you can purchase from. Are all the bikes available on the Cycle to Work scheme? All the bikes is available on the Cycle to Work scheme, obviously taking into mind that certain schemes have limitations on their purchase prices to which we have to adhere to. There are certain bikes which is over a certain amount to which we cannot offer top-up services, but there is certain amounts that we can have a look at to assist you to get a bike uh, that you are looking for. So yes, we do offer all the bikes on Cycle to Work schemes within the limitations of the scheme. Perfect. So one other sizing question. Uh, I'm six foot four. Do you have any bikes that would be suitable for a rider of my height? Six foot four? Yes, most definitely. Our extra large frames will most definitely suit you. The first bike jumping into my head, again, coming back to the CGR, which um, uh, will fit you at extra large frame. We have a colleague as well, which is six foot, uh, six foot three, uh, who also rides extra large frame sizes. And so, yes, most definitely. The extra large, if you have a look at the CGR, maybe the SL if you want to use it for a road bike as a road bike, so yeah. Right, I've got one last question yes. is, what is the difference between the integrated level five and level three carbon bars? So the actual difference between the two is obviously the mold itself. The level five integrated bar and stem is a single mold, whereas the level three is a separate handle bar as a traditional bar would be. Uh, from a setup point of view, the, uh, the, the level three is more versatile in getting a position right, more for tilt, and upwards, uh, the turning of the stem up, upside down, inverting your stem if you, if you prefer that setup, because on the level five, you will not be able to do that. So that is the main differences between the two. They are both constructed from carbon fiber, so very nice and light, very compliant, very comfortable to ride. But yes, that is the biggest differences between the two. So from my side, I would like to say thank you for everyone tuning in today and having a look at our range. This is a first for us to do. And we thank you for watching from my point of view. I hope I answered all your questions. Feel free to get in touch with us through our going store service. Katie is going to take on now. So from my side, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Jakub. So yeah, we're going to be doing another live later on today at 6 p.m. So if there's anything that you didn't get um, answered, come back later on um, and just ask us your questions then. So yeah, thank you so much and we'll see you soon.